Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Robert Bavarian, this is Crusader Kings 2, where we return to Jotunheimer. At least I believe that it is how it is pronounced. It is difficult, okay, but I'm trying my best. We are in a wonderful, wonderful situation, but you already know that much. I mean, we have a gigantic army that has sadly suffered a bit from attrition, but that's okay. We're gonna bring them down here and they're gonna be fine. Uh, and we have, of course, actually achieved Never Start a Land War in Asia, and in record speed. May I just add that the fact that I was able to go from feudal here in Tibet, you know, to actual nomads sped up the game quite significantly. This means that we can now move on. I'm much more free in any decision that I make because now I no longer actually have to try to get this achievement before the Mongols come, meaning I would not uh, be able to get it at all. And I'm very happy about that progress. I'm in fact so happy that let's just take a moment here and check out what has happened in the world. So. We started, of course, over here in Retz, and we have left a mark, although not really intentionally. As you can see right here, the Normans are everywhere, the Bretons are barely still existing. The Normans also took this over here, so yeah, the Normans are everywhere. <laughs> Man, what is this? How did any of this happen? But either way, I'm very happy about it, because it means that we can also get the Conqueror achievement whenever we conquer England as, you know, a Norman English Catholic character or any Christian religion for that matter. Then we went down here, Sardinia. We did create a republic down here that then moved up here and got promptly deleted. But over here, the Norse people have held for quite some time. There's even a couple still left. You can see that I think our house is... Oh no, our house from over here is now gone. Yeah, no, oh, there he is, Sheikh Zaud of Ascalan. He is Sunni and he lives. Good for you. Good for you indeed. We took that over and then we started moving over to Socotra. Socotra, which at some point was practically half of Abyssinia, but is no longer. And as you can see, they are still going on. They're still going strong and most importantly, they are dominating the trade. I can only uh, guess that they're making mad money. Honestly, they're making very little money, man. That is disappointing. Beyond that, we moved, of course, into Persia. We created the reformed Zunist faith that views us, you know, that views our family as a part of the godly families of the Germanic mythology, so to speak. And as you can see, they have somewhat prevailed. There's still, you know, Zunism and Zunist characters everywhere, but the actual Zunist uh, kind of uh, nation has fallen apart. You can see in the dynasty overview that it's still fairly mostly hastening. You have the Shah Mangni, son, uh, son of the darkness of Sabudistan over here. Then we have Dastwa Abuzar, so the actual head of the religion right here in... What even is this? This is Iraq. Why are you... How are you holding Iraq? Well, it doesn't really matter. And then over here we have Khorasan, if I may find it. There it is, King Guthrud of Khorasan, all of which is, of course, uh, in pieces, you could say. Now, Subashi, interestingly enough, is also Zunist. We turned them Zunist by accident when we made our way into Tibet, and they stayed Zunist ever since. And the Zunists are suffering, but I think that is nice. It just shows that there's a lot of chaos in this region. Everything is going down, everything is going on, and nobody is really happy. Especially with the arrival of Shah Gul Rais, the butcher of the Ghaznavi dynasty, Sabuktigin, at this point already passed away. And um, I'm very distraught by the fact that I renamed this to Bergland, because I did not know that in Muslim realms, if you rename a title, it is then the precedent that that title's adjective is used instead of the dynasty name. Usually it would say Ghaznavid here, but... Instead, it says Bergish, which, which was literally a meme. Now, either way, we then moved on to Tibet, and in Tibet, of course, uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know. It fell apart, and it didn't just fall apart into, like, one religion. We have Hindus here, we have uh, Manichaeans here. No, yeah, that, those are Manichaeans. We have, of course, the Reformed Burns still, but then also some Taoists. We have uh, some Buddhists. I, I don't know. This is kind of crazy. I don't know exactly what happened here, but... I don't think I can really do anything about it. Now, that is essentially the family history. We do have some distant relatives over here who are now all Zunists, by the way, so I already know that I'm going to destroy them because Zunism isn't allowed to be up here. There has to be Zunesco, of course. King Semundre of Gardari uh, Gardariki, and then over here is Jarl Angrem, the Cruel of Piskov. And that is quite nice. That is a quite a sizable land mass that he has under his control. But that's essentially our dynasty. And we are slowly but surely turning into horses, and I have big plans for this episode. Let's just focus on reforming the Tengri faith. I already have a plan for that as well, so I'll see you right when that is possible. The Realm of the Straylings. I have never seen this event before. So, obviously, we have the normal Vinland events. I didn't show them off because there's nothing special about them, but what is this? The Realm of the Straylings. Grave news from beyond the Western Sea. The explorer Torfin Kalsevni sailed towards Vinland with three full longships, intending to establish a permanent settlement in the New World. Sadly, while sailing further south along the coast of Vinland, they came upon a large party of heavily armed Straylings warriors. The Straylings butchered the Norsemen and captured two of the three longships. Thorfinn himself was apparently sacrificed to the vengeful guards, but a few of his men were released so that they could bring warning back to Greenland. According to the survivors, the Straylings then sailed the captured uh, ships south towards the cities of the Great Realm, where our shipbuilding techniques will be studied by their 
learned men. I fear we have awoke, uh, awoken something dark. Oh no. Is this like, is this just flavor? Or did we just awake like the mega Aztecs or something? <laughs> I assume Scrailing is essentially just our name for the Aztecs. But my god. Now I'm spooked. And look at that. Just like that, we can now all of a sudden reform the religion. Now, I thought about it, you know, I thought about what we should do here quite a bit. And judging by the fact that our character is insane, that his father is insane, and that we are all literal horses, I'm going to go and I'm going to pick bloodthirsty guards. I think that is excellent. I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, if not now, then probably for no other religion that we are reforming in this playthrough. And beyond that, I also thought about this one. I really want to go with Autocephalus here because that at least makes it so that every nomad realm is, you know, strong in their own right. But, and this is one of the big things, in my opinion, when it comes to playing nomads if we go with Hero uh, herocratic or if we give them you know a temporal leader which by the way would bug out my succession as it always does we would run into the trouble of having nomads that are simply way too strong and that of course would ruin the map with about 400 years more to go we're not going to do that we're going to go warmongering we're going to go eternal riders bloodthirsty guards and autocephalus and here we go only look at that the sky temple Autocephalus, tank recruit, Yakut, I suppose, is the biggest guy. He's our vassal. That is all fine. And Dandy, he is Turkish. Interesting. And not Norse, which was what I expected. But that's okay. The Tank Reformation. The ancient Tank religion is proving unable to withstand the onslaught of the cross on the moon rather than abandoning the old ways. Kagan Grimr of Jötun... Uh, I can't even pronounce it. And you know what? I need to rename it anyway. Um, we're going to rename this. Jötun Haimar. Heimer, Jotunheimer, I think. Uh, Kagan Grimler of Jotunheimer. And the most powerful priests have decided to reform the Tengri faith in order to turn the tides and lead their soul against the new religions. Reorganized as an autocephalous hierarchy of loosely connected high priests, the Tengri faith has been entirely reinvigorated, forsaking its shamanistic roots and acquiring an official dogma fit to oppose its rivals. This event could mark the beginning of a new era of pagan revivalism. Author of Europe and spell doom for the Abrahamic usurpers. Okay, what we're gonna do here is essentially, I'm gonna. Click this button quite a bit, so I'll see you afterwards. Ah, beautiful. We've finally done it. I have sacrificed everybody that was possible to be sacrificed, and blood for the blood gods is really the result of Kagan Grimr, the Scourge of Uko, which is just one of the dumbest names, by the way, because I got it when I think I conquered it, like, up here. Uh, at least, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, then Uko is somewhere over there. I got it for some meaningless conquest when we conquered the entire uh, the entire step and now sacrificed so many of their people. Now, what I'm getting prepared for is we are, of course, going west, so I'm gonna, you know, conquer some stuff, but I'm kind of eyeing China. Once the civil war is over, once we, once we reach stable, I might go in against them. I'm not entirely certain, but I think I will at least try. And there you go, I'm a hemophiliac. It needs to be done. I leave the altar with my clothes still dripping on the blood of my last victim. After having officiated a few sacrifi uh, sacrificial rites, I have found that my hands are much steady and that my heart is much more impervious to the incoherent pleas of my offerings to the gods. Gorgeous. Keep it up. Great holy war for Volga, Bulgaria. Excuse me? Ah, uh, you know... I mean, sure. You know what? I'll, I'll support that. I think I can uh, be good help in this and I think I can win this war. In the name of uh, Tengri, of course. Let's do it. Volga Bulgaria shall be ours. And now we have become a hemophant. There might have been a time when the sight of blood unsettled me, or when the wailing of a child could make my dagger quake and fill my mind with dread, but not any longer. The gods have granted me the fortitude to perform their sacred work. The immortals must be appeased. And you know what? The immortals shall be appeased, because I'm pretty sure that if I go on and immediately sacrifice someone more, that we can even rank up yet again. The crowd be uh, below me cheers as the head of my last sacrifice rolls down the steps of the temple. I feel the heart in the sacred brazier, a brazier watching it hiss and burn and singing praises to the gods. The gods demand more blood, indeed they do. This man has filled rivers with the blood of his victims and built mountains out of their skulls in his psychotic desire to please the cruel gods he worships. That sounds about right. That sounds about right for the characters that we are playing here. Here we go, Harbinger of the Blood Gods. Tengu priests are notorious throughout the world for their sanguinary pr uh, practices. The many sacrifices performed in the name of our gods or are an imperative necessity, a grim responsibility that every pious man must take part in if we wish to avoid the terrible wrath of our immortal masters. Yet few can deny that my accomplishments in sating the gods' eternal thirst tower above those of all of my colleagues. Through my faith and dedication, I have cleansed the eternity of Jotunheimar in a sea of blood, forging a sacred leg a legacy that will not soon be forgotten. 
And there you go, sacrificing prisoners yields an additional prestige reward. It's a pretty mediocre bloodline, but I think this fits. We've brought chaos and destruction to the world. And look at that, I actually got the solar crown back by inheritance there. We got quite lucky for it, I think. Dreaded. Kagan Grimre this, uh, this dedicated his life to build an empire of blood and skulls in honor of his fickle and cruel guards. Gorgeous. We did it. Not the best bloodline, but I love the story behind it. That is really all that matters to me, I think. Look at that. Here we go. <laughs> God, these borders are horrible, but we did win. We did win the war. And Kagan Grimre, the dreaded, is a much better name. Which is why I'm actually very, very happy about the bloodline that we got here. I don't know if this locks us out of anything, but if it does, then so be it. At the end of the day, you know, that is just how it goes. But look at that. Successful Great Holy War. I alone. I alone did this, believe you me. Now, the borders are hideous, but of course, I want to go towards Sumonesco lands. Because we need to stop the Zunas over here that are of our blood. And uh, we can only really do that if we are close to them, can't we? So, what we're going to do is we're just going to start walking. And we start walking, I mean, we're going to start knocking them down wherever we go. Because we need to connect these lands so that I can make, uh, you know, at least for a fairly decent border. They're not going to be beautiful, but they don't need to be hideous as they are, of course, right now. So, you know what I'm thinking? I would really like it if I could take control of this and make this our new territory. I would actually really love that, I think. Oh, I don't have an invasion. I have a flower war, of course, but I don't think that we have an invasion. Uh, sorry, I meant uh, subjugation. So in that case, I can't even really do that. I guess we gotta wait for the invasion becoming valid again. And I think that's fine. We can spend some time in the steps here. We are, of course, incredibly strong. So I don't think really anyone minds. And would you look at that? Now, it's not beautiful, but we have a connection. So even if I were to die right now, this land wouldn't become independent. Kazar, what did you do? Oh my god, Kazaria. Not like this. You can't, you can't do this, Kazaria. This is not, this is not right. It's just not right. Um, I, okay, I think we're gonna stay over here in the east for, for a while, maybe like two decades or something. I just wanna remain over here while uh, Kazaria will then hopefully lose, you know, control of this stuff. Because if they don't, then we have a, we're gonna be in trouble. I mean, you know, getting over there will be quite a bit harder, but we'll see. Now. We are already 45 years old. We, are, we won't live forever. Um, my heir is my brother Sigtrix, seeing as I, of course, you know. Uh, I may have uh, no balls, but Sigtrix has a couple of children, and those children will then hopefully actually finally lead me into horse territory. So Marley, the Sigtrixon, will be in a position where he will be marrying all of the horses that have been born right here, and then hopefully that will finally and permanently bring us into horse territory. But with all that being said, Let's get another achievement here. Ask, uh, wor let's worship the ancestors, let's ask them for a long and healthy life, and then let's sacrifice our leg, because we already sacrificed a hand, we sacrificed an eye, and this should give me an achievement. Let's check it out. Boom, there you go, scarred for life. We did it. Man, I'm getting closer and closer. I think we're like, what, 13 achievements away now from 100%ing this game? And we're going to get at least one, uh, two more with this run alone, so I'm very, very hopeful that we can finish this off in a good time. Oh man, god damn it, they're being invaded by the Yurchins again. Listen, I think it's actually good. I'm gonna hang out here for a while in the steps. I really want to try and invade China. If it doesn't work out, then so be it, but I'm gonna give it another two decades maybe. What is, you know, of course a bit good about this is also that the landscape can change without me having to get involved. I don't always need to be around. I don't always need to change things, and I think that is more than fair to essentially, you know, wait until we maybe, uh, can actually move on, but I do want to try and test my metal against China. I think we can do it. Honestly, I'm gonna build up probably to about 40k, but I think we can do it already with 30k. You just gotta be smart about uh, being a tactician. So, if the Yurchins may please stop this, I would very much be thankful for it. I don't want to raid you. Can I give you horses? Does this do anything for me? That's the main question here for me. Um, it doesn't... No, okay, so my question was, does this maybe change the status of China for the better? But it does not appear so, so don't worry too much about it. Well, I mean, at the very least, China is now merely in the unrest phase. Uh, phase. I think they already have another dynasty. Listen, all I'm waiting for is for China to become stable, and then we will immediately attack, and then we can move on. Uh, as I said, I think it's good that we're getting some time out of the way just sitting around, but this is, uh, in my opinion, a bit of a filler episode, because we're not doing much except, you know, hanging around, really. 
Oh no, and since I'm a leper, I'm now wearing a mask. I'm disfigured, Kagan Grimre the Dreaded. He is feared, he is afraid of life, and honestly, he's had a pretty terrible life, which probably explains why he has been so incredibly cruel. Now, China, come on, be ready for me. I'm ready, and I'm dead, as you can see, but we have become uh, the wonderful, the great, and people usurp titles. God, look at these Kagans being like, I'm ready to rebel. No, you're not ready. You are not ready by any stretch of the imagination to rebel against me, my friend. All right, let's take less of wars here. Let's, uh, you know, reabsorb these clans, I suppose. I need to create some more clans as well. I can't believe all of these nerds declared independence. That is unbelievable to me. Now, sadly, the result of this is that, well, you can see it for yourself. The Church of Zoon is everywhere now because... Kagan Somalithi was Zunus the entire time, and I sadly couldn't stop him from being Zunus primarily because, well, you know, you can't convert people, you can't force convert people, and if I were to go back to Tengri right now, which of course I could do, I fear I would be losing all of these secondary wives, and I require those secondary wives, so no, I'm not gonna do this. Now, who are we? We are a stressed out, diligent, shy, shrewd, and strong man that is also a grey eminence, and that will hopefully be able to uh, persuade his wives here to, you know, get some horse children. That would be absolutely gorgeous. Make me a horse and then we can move towards the west. Yeah, as I said, sadly we're gonna see a lot of people here that are now Zunist. Tangriism is reformed, but also gone. Um, I might have just accidentally completely destroyed it because my family is so multi-religious uh, religious, that we are looking at a situation where whoever were to stand to inherit, none of them were Tengri because I only became Tengri, of course, after I became Nomad, so none of my family actually were, you know, already Tengri to begin with. It's a bit of a shame, but honestly, I'll accept it. Uh, Tengri does count as reformed and Zunism, I suppose, is more in line with our family either way. Well, here we are. You know, in hindsight, it really does seem like Tengriism was just a weird madness that fell upon our, I believe, our uncle? I want to say our uncle, yeah. Yeah, our uncle. So, uh, but fell on my uncle, you know, I mean, he sacrificed so many, and at the end of the day, in the name of, of what? In the end of, uh, in, in the name of his delusions of horses? I mean, we are literally horses, so... It's not like, you know, his delusions, oh, and I just plundered this. His delusions actually mean anything to us. We know we're horses, but we know we're not mythical. Um, at least not in the way that the Yotun, uh, Yotun, I, I, I still can't pronounce it, I'll be honest with you, uh, are related to us here. So we have just retaken it all, and as I said, I will be dedicated in my wait for China to finally become stable again. Because I think I can beat them, and only afterwards will I move on, will I move over to the Khazars. Much like they deserve it. He's 66, I think he's gonna die sooner than all of this should splinter if they have the guts to become independent, which they should. But we're gonna see about it. Let's go! We've actually done it. Sukhtrik Sumalithison is born zero years old. We are going to be a horse. Now, he doesn't have horse culture, but I can quickly give that to him whenever we really feel like it, because look at her. Cartoon Sharp Ears of Jotunheimer is a horse, meaning that we will have an education that, you know, allows us to become horses as well on culture, and I am absolutely in love with it. My god, this is the dream. We've actually done it. Glitterhoof and everybody else, thank you so much. And oh my god, I actually cannot believe it. The crusade for Byzantium has been called. See, now I'm curious. Now I am genuinely curious. I don't think I could join the crusade even if I wanted to. There's an achievement in which you have to win a crusade against Byzantium, but would you look at that? I actually regret nothing. Had I gone for, had I gone west immediately, we could already, you know, have reformed, maybe Romuva even, maybe Sumonesco, but we probably would have reformed something. Now instead, we get the crusade for Byzantium. So, you know what? I say, let the AI do what the AI wants to do, because it is outstandingly amazing just how aggressive the AI appears to be. Yeah, you know, being Christian, being Catholic here could potentially be quite neat. Let me just uh, check something out. We don't actually have the piety. I can't even try it, technically speaking. Let me marry this lady. I could, of course, theoretically convert. Oh, it just cost me prestige. Oh, that's really easy then. All right, let's just quickly go with this. And that, of course, takes away uh, the actual marriages here. They become concubines instead. That's okay. Let me check something. Could I theoretically, if I really wanted to, right? I could totally join the Pope. Oh, you know what? Am I gonna do it? I think I'm gonna do it. Oh, I'm gonna do it. Ah, oh, you know I'm gonna do it, man. Okay, this this will take some time and probably won't be helpful, but I'm gonna do my best to join this crusade for Byzantium. 
Let me in, please. Join. And this is- is this cheesy? Oh, absolutely, but I need the- I need the achievement. Let me try to actually get the achievement. I don't know whether we will be able to get it. I am Catholic, I can still have these, and we already have a son, so everything is perfect. Um, I just need to get this done. My god, if this is possible, that would be amazing. Oh my god, and look at that. Yeah, I think I just need to move on. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, because they're in a civil war again. We can skip some more time being nomads, but China appears to have more troubles than uh, they are worth here. They will never leave the state of civil war, I feel. And of course that sucks, but I mean, what are we to do, eh? You know, when I created this army of horses, I was convinced that we would be using it to destroy China. And instead, we are going to destroy the East Roman Empire. Uh, why aren't we fighting? Hello? I would like to fight you. Excuse me? We're not fighting? I can't, I can't, there we go. I can't help but notice that we were indeed not fighting. And now we are, I'm a crusader. Am I getting... Yes, look at this. Oh, beautiful. I think Byzantium could have probably defended itself if not for me. And if that isn't absolutely gorgeous, then I don't know what is. Now I'm thinking, you know what? Who will be my crusade beneficiary? Nobody, right. Nobody's actually eligible. Ah, and I can't even convert any of them. Oh, this is such a shame. Literally nobody is eligible. Um, I can't make any of them Catholic. That is a huge, huge problem. I, I guess I'll let the Pope decide. Yeah, you know what? Sure, I'll, I'll let the Pope decide. Um, I mean, she's not gonna get it after all, but... How is this mechanic going to work? You know what? Let's just, let's just explore this. I do not actually know how this mechanic is going to work. And what do you look at that? Constantinople has fallen to the horse armies. The Norse horse armies have come for Constantinople and have destroyed it. God, it is an absolutely nonsensical play, but I'll be honest with you, when you get the opportunity to get the achievement like this, then you can't say no. It's simply uh, impossible to say no, I think. And you know what? Duke Louis the Chase, stay. Hey, I'll, I'll be your friend. I don't even know what the hell the land that you live in looks like, so you know what? Tell me about it. Ladies and gentlemen, the war's over. The crusade is done. Oh, I don't know what to think of this. Victorious Crusaders, what actually happened here? So I got Venetian ga uh, Guile, which is very nice, because I really did not anticipate it. What is this? Why does it say... Something went very... Very wrong. This is not how this mechanic is supposed to go. What? God is grant- What? <laughs> what? God has granted Kagan Sumalithi of Jotunheimer victory in the Crusade for Thrace. Basilius Apollonius of the Byzantine Empire has been beaten at every turn through the war. He has finally had to give up on his holdings in Thrace. Kagan Sumalithi has granted the new lands of Thrace to himself, I guess. I think it bugged out because I had no one that was applicable to take this over. The Pope has made an announcement about the victory and virtues of the Crusaders as true faithful protectors of the faith. With the Christians being pushed out of their old lands, there are certainly more conflicts to come. Okay, let me just unpause. I just want to see. Nope, the Byzantines do not splinter. They just, they just keep existing. And I'm going to let the Hagia Sophia be a million- oh god. Yeah, I hate when this happens. Um, everybody real mad, huh? No character- thank you. Okay, um... Okay, this is very buggy. I don't think I want to unpause any further. Now, am I still nomad? Yes, I am still nomad. Could I theoretically settle here? Okay, I have a suggestion for you. For all of you. I think we want to go down here. I think we, we want to... I think we want to just live down here. I'll be honest with you. I think I'm going to release everything else and forget about China. China is constantly in a civil war. Who cares? Listen, we could have taken them out. I have 30k. I, I could have easily pulled this. What is your opinion on this? Do we just settle in Thrace in the weirdest maneuver that I have ever personally undertaken? Screw all of these in the north. Uh, in the north. I mean, what would happen? I would convert them. I would reform them. But what about Hellenism? I have to freshen up on uh, how exactly to do Hellenism, but I feel like that would be appropriate. Tell me about it. I would be incredibly... I, I think this might be exciting. It's complete nonsense, just for the record, but I think it would be exciting and... Oh god. Uh... What? Well, anyway, thank you, Pope Clements. <laughs> Now 
Now, if you don't know what to make of this episode, then we are in the same boat, and I hope, I hope that we can solve this crisis uh, <laughs> in the next episode. But it looks like we're gonna do Hellenic next instead of any of the other casual religions that we were thinking about. Now, I want to use this opportunity to, to of course, thank the members of the channel, namely the Barons, Aaron, Stefan, the Riches, T, Snywolf, Elmer, Mello, Thomas, Lachlan, Mitchell, and MFV. And then, of course, also the Counts, Shifty, Woman, and Kazen, and last but not least, the absolutely beautiful Duke, Suspicious Duck, Nathan, Knight of Squires, Kenneth, Eric, Lexo, and Aiden. Thank you all so much for the uh, for the support, and I will see you tomorrow. Don't know in which capacity yet, but until then, later, alligator.